Hello, everybody, and welcome back. So today we will be solving this problem. Um, shown on the screen here, it says two forces, P and Q, act on bolt A, determine their resultant. Uh, there are multiple ways you can determine a resultant for two components. And the method that I'm going to be showing in this video will be using what's called the parallelogram rule. So uh, first thing you want to do is you want to give yourself a good amount of space with the parallelogram rule. Because basically what you're going to do is you're going to redraw the problem and form a parallelogram out of it. So redrawing the problem as a free body diagram, making sure leaving plenty of room. Here is my X and Y coordinate system. Here is the original point A in which the two forces are acting on. There was a 400 or excuse me, a 40 Newton force here. And then there was a 60 Newton force in this direction. And the angle from the 40 to the x-axis was 20 degrees, and the angle between the 60 and 40 was 25 degrees. So that is essentially our free body diagram for this particular problem. Now, in order to use the parallelogram rule, you have to copy and paste a few forces here. So taking the 40 Newton force, copying and pasting it right here at the tip of the 60 Newton force, try to make it as to scale as possible. So there is our copied and paste 40 Newtons of force. And then we are going to repeat that process for the 60 Newtons of force. And we're going to copy and paste that towards the end of the 40. Once again, trying to make it as to scale as possible does help. As you can see, the 60 is not at the same angle but it's just a crude drawing, not to scale. So we have formed more or less a parallelogram here. Now, the resultant of these two forces, 60 and 40, the resultant will always have to, have to be between your forces that you're looking at. So this particular resultant is going to go from corner to corner of your original to your copied versions. So from this corner down here at point A, and it's gonna to go to this corner up here where all those forces connect. And that will be our resultant force, which is what we are trying to find. So what happens here is that a couple of triangles form where you have this triangle here and this triangle here. We will have to use one of these triangles with the overall parallelogram in order to find what this resultant is and what that angle is of the resultant off the x-axis. So in order to do this, just go ahead and fill in as much information as you can at the start. So we know that this total angle here is 25 degrees, as with this angle down here is 25 degrees, equal and opposite. Since these two angles are equal and opposite, these angles right here are also equal and opposite. We don't know what they are yet, but we can find them. So in the meantime, let's just call them lowercase c for those angles. Now, to find c, well, we have a four-sided figure here in our parallelogram. All four-sided figures have 360 degrees. So we can use that information in order to find what angle c is. So we're gonna have our 360 degrees, and we are going to subtract off the two angles of the 25 degrees. And then we are going to divide that by two. This will give us the little angle of C being 155 degrees. So with this information of this angle here, we can now use this top triangle or this bottom triangle, it does not matter. So redrawing it, it would look something like this, where that's my resultant. 
That's my 40. And that is my 60. Of course, not to scale. And then I have this internal angle here of 155 degrees. With this being the angle that I truly want, and we're just going to call that theta for right now. Oop, make it a little bit fatter. Call that theta. So if I can get angle theta, which would be this angle right here, I can just add that with the 20 degrees that was given, and that'll give me the total angle to the result. So I'm going to utilize this little triangle that I've drawn here. So how do I do that? Well, any time that you have two sides that are known, which we have the 1640, and the angle that is opposite the unknown side, well, this angle of 155 degrees is opposite my unknown side, we can use the law of cosines to solve for my unknown side, which the law of cosines is given by c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosines of your little angle that is opposite. So my c squared, which is the capital c squared, would be my resultant. a and b would be my 40 and 60. And then my little angle c, that's why I called it little angle c, would be 155 degrees. One thing that is easily forgotten is the squaring portions here. So a lot of people that I've seen, they'll have your resultant right here and they forget to square root this entire right side. So in total, if I replace with what I have, my C, which is my side I'm looking for, is my resultant. And then I'm going to have my A side squared, which let's just go ahead and call that the 40 Newtons squared, plus my 60 squared minus two times my 40 times my 60, and then cosine of my angle that's opposite my resultant, which is 155 degrees. Just make sure that you have your calculators or whatever you're calculating with in degrees and not radians. And lastly, as I said earlier, the biggest mistake is forgetting to square root all of that. So this resultant here pops out to be 97, 0.73 newtons of force in that upward right direction. But the problem is not over since I also need to determine what this angle theta is in order to get the total angle off of the X so I can actually locate this resultant force that I just calculated. Well, with this, now this side is known, uh, which is 97.73 newtons. And anytime you have three sides known and an internal angle known, you can determine any other internal angle, which there are only two left, using the law of sines. And the law of sines states that if you have side A over its, or the sine of its opposite angle, would be equal to side B over the sine of its angle that's opposite it, and then equal to side C divided by the sine of its little angle opposite. So we are going to keep with calling the resultant side C here, and the little sine of that angle is the angle that's opposite the resultant, which is the 155. So before I was calling the 60 side B, so I will replace this with 60 newtons, and then the angle that's opposite that will be replaced with theta. So let me scroll up just a little bit here. So plugging in our actual physical numbers that we have, we have side B, which is 60 Newtons, divided by the sine of the angle that is opposite that, which is the theta. And that's going to be equal to my resultant side of 97.73 Newtons divided by the sine of the angle that's opposite, which is the 155 degrees. So rearranging, cross multiplying, theta will become this equation of sine inverse of the total of 60 times the sine of 155 degrees, all divided by 97.73. And this angle comes out to be 15.03 degrees in total.
And of course, that will be this angle right here. And the total angle off the X will just be adding in that 15.3 degrees plus the 20 right here, which we will truly locate the result in. Supposed to be plus. My bad. And of course, it's going to delete the entire thing. <laughs> so that's going to be 15.03 plus the 20 degrees. And that gives us 35.03 degrees. And that would be our total off of the x axis. So in the end here, those two forces of 40 and 60 will become this one singular resultant force that would look like this of 97.73 newtons at an angle off of the X of 35.03 degrees. And that is our final answer. So that demonstrates the parallelogram rule. There are other faster methods to do this, which one would be the rectangular uh, components and resultants. And there was a previous video uh, utilizing that quicker, faster method. Um, and if you wanna check that out, go ahead and check that video out. And if you have any comments or questions, just comment below and I will try to answer my best.